Good day, grade 8 learners, and to all the students and teachers who are watching my video today. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sir Romeo, and welcome again to another video lesson about science. If you are a grade 8 student under K-12 curriculum in the Philippines, then you are aware that quarter 1 has already ended last year, which we talked about forces, motion, and energy. And quarter 2 has already started, and we will be introducing another branch of science, which is the Earth Science. Now, uh, if you're uh, in Pasig City, we have modules prepared. However, the first three modules, Module 1, Faults, Module 2, Types of Faults, Module 3, Earthquakes and Faults, uh, can be discussed in just one video lesson. So I'll do my best to discuss it in just one sitting para may idea kayo sa pagsagot nyo ng modules later on. Now, if you have questions or concerns, please comment down below. I'll be more than glad to answer that for you. If you are ready, you can get your notebooks and pen, jot down notes para meron kayong takeaway after this. And pay attention, listen carefully. I think let's begin. Now, these are the focus questions we have to answer by the end of the lesson. First is what causes earthquakes? Second, what are the types of faults? So later on, we'll identify the definition of earthquakes and also enumerate the types of faults and also types of stresses that occurs on rocks. So also, let's think about this question. What happens to a rubber band that is stretched past its elastic limit? So, kung meron tayong rubber band, ano yung mangyayari kapag in-stretch natin ito ng napaka, uh, ng pagkatodo-todo beyond its elastic limit? What would happen? Now, this question has something to do with our lesson today. Without further ado, let's start. Now, scientists studied and we are all aware that the earth is spinning on its own axis so we call it rotation it happens every 24 hours while it is spinning it is also revolving around the sun in one year or 365 and one fourth days while the earth is spinning and also revolving they are moving but it's not something that we could feel because of the massive size and mass of of the earth aside from that movement scientists also believed and told us that the earth is like a, a big jigsaw puzzle so yung mga tectonic plates mga continents are part of these uh, pieces pieces of puzzle they are moving every day every hour every second but we're not feeling it however there will be a time that these movements will be felt by humans and may also cause lives and millions of property damage I am talking about earthquakes. This is the first few topics of quarter two for grade eight curriculum. Now, let's define what earthquakes are. Earthquakes are natural vibrations of the ground caused by movement along gigantic fractures in Earth's crust. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, almost every one of us have already felt these vibrations caused by earthquakes. Sometimes natutulog tayo or, or we're all away, tas naramdaman natin, di ba? It gives us this this uh, certain ano, uh, takot at pangamba na baka magdulot siya ng malaking uh, destruction. This picture is an example of the aftermath after the earthquake. Earthquake results from sudden movements along faults. What is a fault? Later on, we will define what these faults are. It is the sudden shaking of the surface of the earth. As the tectonic plates move, they also cause stress in the crust, which produces faults. Look at that picture. Devastating. If you are aware uh, one of the most catastrophic earthquakes in the Philippines happened last uh, year 1990 in Baguio City, which actually killed thousands of lives and caused 
millions and billions of property damages. You have to also understand that earthquake is not something that can be predicted by scientists or by humans. Only thing we have to do is to just be prepared before, during, and after the earthquake. Now let's proceed. What are the faults? What are these faults? It is a crack or fracture along Earth which movement occurred. It forms when the rocks of the crust are compressed or stretched by plate movement. These rocks are brittle. They break along areas where they are weak. So this is an example of fault. So it is a fracture or crack between two, two plates or plane. And this is where everything happens, especially kapag malapit ka sa, sa fault, major uh, damages can occur within or within the vicinity of the fault. Now, we have to also identify what are the three kinds of faults. Before we do that, we will be mentioning these two terminologies, the foot wall and hanging wall. Kailangan alam niyo muna ang ibig sabihin ng foot wall and hanging wall para pag nag-discuss ako mamaya, you will be able to understand what I will be talking about. Now, the foot wall is the one that you can see on the left side of the screen, hanging wall is on the right. It's already written there, foot wall and hanging wall. Ano ba yung difference niya? As you can see sa foot wall, uh, yung crack niya sa gitna, para siyang slide sa playground, kung saan pwede kang mag-slide. Pero syempre hindi ka mag-slide dun ha. Ganun ang itsura ng foot wall. Si foot wall, nasa ilalim siya ng hanging wall. May kita nyo yung crack niya diagonal siya, di ba? So, si foot wall, siya yung nakaibab, siya yung nakailalim, tapos si hanging wall naman, yung nakaibabaw. Now, yung movement ng dalawang walls na to will be uh, different depending on the type of stress and kung ano yung fault na mapoproduce niya. Later, we will be discussing that. Now, the first type of fault is the normal fault. The usual fault we see, uh, some pictures or some mga videos. Now, it occurs when the crust or the rock layers are being pulled apart due to tension. A stress that pulls rock away from each other or in opposite direction. The overlying block moves down with respect to the lower block. Now, foot wall and hanging wall. Ito yung picture ng normal fault. Yung pinakita kong picture kanina ng example ng fault, that's actually a normal fault. Now, paano ba ito nangyayari? Kapag normal fault kasi, yung stress na meron sa kanya is produced by tensional stress or ang tendency, yung dalawang rock layers ay nagmumove siya uh, opposite to each other. If you can see the arrow, yung isa opposite sa isa. So, ang tendency, mag-aaroon ng uka sa gitna. Tapos, since bago pa magkaroon ng earthquake, yung planes na yan, magkadikit yung foot wall and hang wall, diba? Kapag naghiwalay siya, opposite direction, ang tendency, try nyo ilagay yung kamay nyo, yung dalawang kamay nyo, nakapatong yung isa sa isang kamay. I-try nyo gawin yung, yung crack sa gitna, yun kunari yung mga daliri nyo sa pababa. So, foot wall, pababa, tapos yung hanging wall, lagay nyo lang sa ibabaw yung kamay nyo sa Ilagay nyo lang yung, yung kanang kamay nyo sa ibabaw ng kaliwang kamay ninyo. Okay? Now, kapag opposite direction sa ang mangyayari, syempre maghihiwalay sila, yung hanging wall, habang humihiwalay siya, pumapailalim siya. Pag pumailalim siya, that is an example of normal fault. Yung foot wall ang nasa taas, yung hanging wall ang nasa ibaba. Gets nyo ba yun? Sana all. Now, the second example, a second uh, type of fault is the reverse fault or the thrust fault. It occurs when crusts or rock layers are pushed against or towards each other due to a stress known as compression. In a reverse fault, the hanging wall moves up relative to the foot wall. Uh, lagay niyo uli yung kamay niyo, left hand, tapos right hand sa ibabaw ng left hand. Okay? Now, Kapag reverse fault, compression stress naman siya. 
hindi siya naghihiwalay, naguuntugan siya, they are colliding to each other, same direction, papunta sa gitna. So, itry nyo i-push yung dalawang kamay nyo. Pag pinush nyo yung dalawang kamay nyo, ang tendency, yung right hand nyo, which is the hanging wall, siya yung umiibabaw, tapos yung foot wall, o yung left hand ninyo, siya naman yung pumunta sa ilalim. Tama? Good. So, kapag nangyari yan, then you have a reverse foot or a thrust foot. I hope na gets nyo yung explanation ko. Now, the third one is a strike slip foot or a transverse foot. Ito iba naman to sa reverse at saka sa normal foot. Sa kanya naman, magkapareha siya, wala nang diagonal crack sa gitna. Dalawa lang siyang plain, uh, dalawa, dalawa lang siyang rock layer. Tapos, ang movement naman niya, opposite direction din siya, pero yung isa papunta sa left, yung isa papunta sa right. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng, strict, ng strike slip or transverse foot. Strike. Nako. Questions? None? I hope you understood the three types of faults. Now, these faults actually happens because of the stress na meron sa kanila. Hindi ito yung stress na depressed ka or problemado ka kasi nag-break kayo ng bebe mo. Hindi yan. Stress is a kind of force that squeezes the rocks together, together or pull apart or pushes them in different directions. So, ito yung main cause kung bakit nagkakaroon ng movement yung mga plate tectonics natin. Now, there are also three types of stresses that acts on rocks or the layers of the earth. Now, first one is a compression. Stress pushes rocks towards each other like cars in head-on collision. So, yung dalawang kare nagbanggaan. The compressional forces push rocks together and may tend to form scarp. So, si compression uh, stress or compressional stress, ito yung stress na magpo-produce ng Ano sa tingin yung klaseng fault? It would produce a reverse type of fault. Kasi, ang nangyari sa kanya, nag-compress, nag-untugan nag silang dalawa, nag-collide sila, tapos, yung sinasabi natin, scarp, ito yung mga bato daw na nasa taas na, na naitapon. Kasi nga, nung nag-untugan, parang yung mga debris ba, or what, mga rocks. So, yun yung scarp na sinasabi. So, kung meron kang compression fault, ay kung meron kang reverse fault, definitely, compressional stress yung nangyari dun kung bakit ka nagkaroon ng reverse fault. The second one is a tension stress which pulls or stretches rock apart in opposite directions. The tensional forces pull away from each other. So, kung meron kang tension stress or tensional stress, then you would be able to create a kind of normal fault. So, ito naman, nag-move siya opposite direction na nagkaroon ng opposite direction, hence, nagproduce ka ng normal fault. Naghiwalay lang siya. The last one is what we call a shear stress, which pushes one side of a body of rock in one direction and the opposite side of the body of rock in the opposite direction. So, si shear stress, ito naman yung kind ng stress na nagpoproduce ng yung pangatlong type ng fault, which is the transverse fault. Alright? Clear? So, opposite direction siya, nakikiskisan sila, pero left-right sila. Okay? Alright, now, let's review. Now, these are the kinds of forces. Also, we'd be able to identify anong klaseng fault ang meron dyan. First, review tayo ha. Tensional stress. Si tensional stress, ang mapoproduce niyang fault ay, what do you think? Correct. It's the normal fault. So, pag-tensional, normal fault, naghiwalay sila. Second one is a compressional stress. Compressional stress, nag-collide sila, parang coaching nagkabanggaan. Hence, you will be able to get a, ano, ano klaseng uh, fault yun? Correct. It is a reverse type of fault. The third one is shear stress. Shear stress, Nagkiskisan sila, but opposite direction. The other one is left, the other one is right direction. Hence, you will be able to have the third type of fault, which is what? Correct. It's the transverse fault. Alright. Very good. I really do hope na 
marami kayo natutunan for today. And again, we talked about what earthquake is, what are the types of faults, and what are the different types of stresses that which act on rock layers. All right. On our next video lesson, we will be talking about the epicenter, the intensity, uh, what kind of damages will earthquake produce after, and other topics with regards to the earthquake. Thank you for watching and thank you for paying attention. I'll see you again in our next video lesson. Again, this is Sir Romeo. Thank you for watching.